You see the spirit from the hostages, and that's what they are as hostages. They've been treated terribly and very unfairly, and you know that, and everybody knows that. And we're going to be working on that soon. The first day we get into office, we're going to save our country, and we're going to work with the people to treat those unbelievable patriots, and they were unbelievable patriots and are. Well, I think it's very unfortunate at a time that there are American hostages being held in Gaza that uh, the president or any other leaders would refer to people that are moving through our our uh, justice system uh, as hostages. And uh, it's just it's just unacceptable. I, I was there on January 6th. I, I have no doubt in my mind, Margaret, that that some people were caught up in the moment and that entered the Capitol. And um, uh, and they're certainly entitled to due process of law for uh, any nonviolent activities that day. But uh, the assaults on police officers, ultimately an environment that, that claimed lives, uh, is something that uh, uh, I think was tragic uh, that day, and I'll, I'll never diminish it. Mike Pence, once again, taking a stand against his former boss. He also refused to endorse Trump for president. Those comments from Donald Trump came during a stump speech for a Senate candidate in Ohio. But Trump was more focused on his personal grievances, giving more incendiary remarks. Meanwhile, the former president has so far refused to condemn Vladimir Putin for the death of Alexei Navalny. But for the first time publicly, Putin addressed the death of his chief rival. Also ahead, we'll show you the Israeli prime minister, Benjamin Netanyahu's response to Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer after the highest ranking Jewish elected official in the U.S. called for new elections in Israel. So we're looking at news here and around the world. But Donald Trump, again, the Republican front runner, who's basically clinched the nomination. Right. Uh, addressing one of the first things he'll do in office is free the, and I say this in quote, hostages. It's beyond twisted for him to use that word. Not surprised, but as disturbed as we'll ever be. Well, and, and, and what if you were an American family with hostages still being held Sick. in tunnels underneath Gaza, people who actually are hostages who are doing nothing but being in their home or at a music festival, minding their own business when Hamas terrorists came and seized them and, and, and beat them, raped them, abused them, took them underground. Holding someone. And, and Donald Trump comparing those people in name to others that drove from across the country, came to the Capitol, used bear spray on police officers, beat the hell out of cops, beat the hell out of other people who got in their way, wanted to hang Mike Pence, were looking for Nancy Pelosi, uh, destroyed, uh, destroyed a lot of offices, defecated in the United States Capitol, and, and again, it jammed cops' heads uh, in, in, in doors and, and tried to try to hurt as many people as they could. And Jonathan Lemire, um, you know, Donald Trump, I remember the day after uh, Donald Trump and members of his family uh, getting in trouble for calling uh, these rioters mm -hmm. uh, patriots and, and they backed off. Some of them backed off. Donald Trump now just going straight, weighing straight in saying that these people were, were patriots and that, you know, others saying that this wasn't a bloodbath, I would just suggest that you talk to the wives, sons, and da daughters of those police officers who lost their lives as a result of January 6th. And, and they will tell you that, that their loved ones lost their lives as a result of January 6th, and Donald Trump continues to praise these people, and he says, he says, everybody uh, knows that they're patriots. No, everybody doesn't. In fact, you have to be twisted and demented in your head. Uh, if you could look at the rioting, if you could look at people beating the hell out of American cops, out of, out of police officers with American flags, and trying to kill them, and call them hostages after they went through uh, the court system. That is a sickness and a twistness, uh, a twistedness, uh, and, and and the continued. You have people 
continuing to try to, to apologize for this behavior, starting with Donald Trump, trying to minimize what happened on January the 6th. And, you know, for those who say, oh, why do you talk about Donald Trump? We talk about Donald Trump because, yes, democracy is on the line when Donald Trump says this is normal political behavior. The RNC, of course, said it was normal political behavior. Donald Trump says it, and he says those people abusing police officers are patriots, and those that got sent to jail for trying to overrun the U.S. Capitol and for beating the hell out of cops are hostages. Nothing... There's nothing normal about this. And for, for those weak, need wimps that say we should never mention Donald Trump's name and just turn our faces from this and talk about something else, I would suggest there are a lot of Germans who tried that with Hitler. Mm -hmm. Didn't turn out well. There just look at this. Killed. Just look at this footage. Look at this footage. These are rioters with flagpoles with hockey sticks with spears trying to attack cops we just saw footage there a cop being crushed in a door being tasered with their own weapons being assaulted with their own guns this Donald is by Trump any definition people patriots this by any definition is a bloodbath and i know there's a lot of debate this weekend about trump's use of bloodbath we'll, at mm. that ohio rally we'll get into that but let's take a second back and just note how he started that rally in ohio they played the January 6th convict choir, that their version of the national anthem. These convicts. These convicts here. These rioters. And Donald Trump, first of all, said they were hostages and said that on day one were he to be elected. Mind you, he also said on day one he'd be a dictator for, on day one. He's also saying now on day one he would try to free these hostages. But more than that, Donald Trump was a former commander in chief of this nation. And he saluted, he held up his hand and saluted at his temple this version of the national anthem, the convict choir's version of the national anthem. And in that image, even as much as any of his rhetoric shows you what he wants to bring to this nation again, were he to take office. Well, let's, let, let's look at that moment, Jonathan, because again, you know, people are so numbed by Donald Trump right now. We have Ed Luce that we're going to be bringing in a little bit. Ed did what I think a lot of, a lot of us should do, what a lot of journalists should do, and, and that is instead of trying to figure out the totality of the chaos, Ed said, let me just tell you what happened over the past five days and just focus on that and understand that if any candidate from any other time had done one of, of, of these, the multitude of things that he did over five days, they would forever be eliminated from American political discussion. That doesn't happen here, and it doesn't happen. And so, yeah, that's a real problem, including, again, pledging allegiance uh, to a convict choir's version of the national anthem. Take a look. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the horribly and unfairly treated January 6th hostages. It's, uh, again, the, 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 these people, these people, I guess, it's a call. I don't know. Maybe they're brainwashed into it. Um, but I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. No yeah. apologies. No apologies. There are a lot of people, oh, I'm going to travel out of Manhattan where I've lived my entire life and drive into Pennsylvania and try to understand a bit better these. No, you don't have to really drive from the Upper East Side to Scranton to figure out these are people that want an autocrat. These are people who don't like American democracy the way it is because they understand that they lose a fair fight. They don't want a fair fight. They don't want a fair political fight. They just, they want to accept election results when they win and they want to start a revolution when they lose. And they're still embracing it here. It is, it is sick, Mika, it's sick. And you know, I swear to God, I swear to God, I, 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 the press has got to wake up and start saying, let's try to understand who these people are. It's pretty obvious. They have the video. They see the cops that are getting the hell beaten out of them. 
and they're calling these people hostages. They're lying day in and day out about what happened on January the 6th. They're lying and saying, oh, nobody tried to hurt Mike Pence. Nobody tried to hurt Nancy Pelosi. And yet you talk to the security detail. They were calling home. They were calling home to say goodbye to their loved ones like it was on 9-11 because they thought they were going to get caught by Donald Trump supporters and killed. So please, I mean, trying to understand this seriously is, is like trying to understand a poisonous oh, shit snake that's can't. about to bite you. And it's American democracy that, that, that's at risk over the next six months. And I swear to God, the fact that this race is even close speaks volumes about what Donald Trump has done to this country.